The deepest desire in the heart of every human being is to know the love of God. Len Zoderman is here today to talk about how the love of God is healing wounded hearts. You're going to hear how one touch of God's love can powerfully change your life. Stay with us. This is Lifeline Today. Welcome to Lifeline Today. So glad you tuned into the broadcast because we're going to have a wonderful time. Our guest today is <laughs> Len Soderman. Welcome to the program. Welcome, Len. Good to see you, so Dick good and to have you back. Happy to be here. You yeah. know, yes. I probably should have introduced you as Prophet Z. Right? Oh, yes. Because <laughs> uh, that was a nickname that we picked up over the years, over the decades Absolutely. of doing TV ministry. Yeah. We've always appreciated your prophetic yeah. sense when we've been doing television, especially live television, mm -hmm. which yeah, right. both of us know that's not an easy yeah, thing to do. True. But uh, God really powerfully used you yeah. many, many years and many, many times, and recently too. So uh, we are so thankful that we can have Len back on a regular basis. We're not that far apart. Not that yeah, far apart. Right. I mean, where we live. Well, Len, today you're carrying a message uh, really about the love of God in mm -hmm. your heart. And uh, it's interesting because we're hearing from a lot of different ministries and different conferences, different leaders, all about the emphasis of love and family. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. yeah, right. We're in a new awakening of the Father. Uh, a little over 100 years ago, there was an awakening of the Holy Spirit. 500 years ago, there was an awakening of Jesus as our mm -hmm. Savior. Yeah. We are in the threshold of a, of, a, of a cultural awakening of the Father and of all the Father is as it relates to His love and to His glory. Mm -hmm. See, the love of God, the Bible says God is love, mm -hmm. but love is, is the outward avenue for us to come in to the understanding of who the Father is. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, and Len, many, many years, we as ministers have ministered to the heart, to the intellect or yes. to the head, you know. And I mean, I, I, I'll just quote one scripture, you shall know the truth and the there truth shall set you free. It's just, you just got to know yeah. the word. You got to get it in your yes. head. But you know what? You say that the real person is not the head. The real person is the heart. 100%. Um, the intellect is, well, I mean, our brain is an organ, mm -hmm. and our intellect is, of course, a seat that, that interprets a three-world a three world, uh, dimension, right? Yeah, or a three-dimensional right. world. Yeah. But you think of these scriptures, the good man out of the good treasure of his heart brings forth good things. The evil man out of the evil treasure of his heart brings forth evil things. Mm -hmm. We don't believe out of our intellect as mental assent. The Bible says if you'll confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart mm -hmm. that God has raised him from the dead. Mark 11 yeah. says if you speak to the mountain and you believe in your heart, the things you say will come mm -hmm. to pass. Um, you know, um, trust in the Lord with all your heart. The heart is the center of who we are. Yes. And you see, it's the, and it's the center of our identity. So the heart is profound. Yeah. But but we we have been a we've been through a phase mm -hmm. of where truth was the normative expression of what we presented the gospel into. Yeah. But we are moving into an era where the experience of God is now going to be fundamental. Where it says, "And you shall know the truth." Know is to experientially know. Wow. You know, it's mm -hmm. interesting you say the word heart, yeah. and this is uh, connecting with Father God. It, absolutely. And uh, it is true. We're hearing this emphasis everywhere. It is. But, it's you know, uh, the other day I was uh, actually preaching a message on the heart and mm. the, the treasure of the heart. Yeah. And uh, I happened to come across Genesis 6, where it talks about yeah. in the days pre pre-flood, yeah. Noah, that uh, God saw the sin of mankind. Yeah. And it says, and he was grieved in his heart. Yeah. And it's interesting that we're in his image. Yes. That all that God does comes out of his heart. Out of his heart as well. Mm. Amazing thought, isn't it? Yeah. 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 The heart is the central part of who we are. And so we guard our heart. We live out of our heart. And so the heart becomes very important to the, mm. as it relates to the Father. Yeah. Yes, you see, right. uh, the, the Trinity represents different dimensions of God. Each yeah. person is vital. Yeah. And, and so... You know, the, the uh, yeah, but when it comes to the Father and to the love of the Father, mm -hmm. we're now talking the core of our hearts. Yeah. Is that the greatest cry then of our hearts, Lynn? Is it for the love 
to know the love of God. Well, the greatest need of our heart is to is be loved. Is to be loved. That's the greatest need of our heart from a little child all the way through the years of our... You take somebody who's even older in life. Yeah. What is the greatest need that they have? Yeah. It's, it's to be loved. Yeah. You see, right. and, and that's the core need of our heart. And so when, when we do not experience authentic, true love, okay, the vacuum of that creates a, a massive dysfunction into mm -hmm. the hearts and the lives of people. Mm -hmm. Which is something we're facing in our, our culture anyway on yeah. a massive level, on a, massive on a level. widespread Epic. level. Epic. So Len, how would, how would a wounded heart, say, present in, uh, in today's mm -hmm. society, mm -hmm. in a person's yeah. life. Well, you know, it's, it's interesting you say that, Joan, because if you, if you say, if I go into a church and I say, we're coming into a time of an awakening of the love of the Father, yeah. you know what, everybody says, oh yeah, well, I know that. I know I God know. is love. <laughs> so there's no point talking about it yeah. because I read about it, I hear it, and I've, yeah. I know. But the question is, have you experienced it? Mm -hmm. and, and, and so now we drill a little bit deeper to explore what, what do the deficiencies of, of the love of God begin to look like. Hmm. And, and you see, the core issue of what the love of God brings is, a th is authentic identity to us. Hmm. Mm -hmm. and, and so in the absence of an authentic identity, what you end up is with rejection. Yeah. Wow. Rejection is profound because rejection then causes us to, it, it affects us internally, it affects us emotionally, but it affects us relationally, it affects us in terms of our health. Mm -hmm. But then you begin to see phenomena where people then feel unloved. Yeah. The, the emotion of feeling unloved produces deep emotional pain. Mm -hmm. right. Deep emotional pain, is you, and I've counseled hundreds and hundreds of people, hundred, thousands probably, wow. but, but emotional pain will drive people to addiction. Yeah. Because pain cannot, we, we can't live with pain indefinitely. Mm -hmm. yeah. And so, people then will opt for anything that will bring comfort into their lives. Yeah. We see 2 Corinthians 1 says that God is the God, the Father of all comfort. Yeah. Like who would have ever thought that our Father's love brings comfort into our, into our hearts, brings comfort into our lives. But in the absence of that, then that emotional pain can become psychogenetic pain where it actually manifests in people's bodies. And now you begin to see the spins can of addiction. Can I ask you to define that word again? Psycho Psychogenetic pain. Yeah. Where, yes. where emotional pain yeah. actually begins to manifest as physical pain within people's bodies. Yeah. And it's huge. My and, and so now we see addiction on opioids. We see people in states of depression, mm. anxiety. You know, perfect love casts out all fear. So yeah. fear produces anxiety. And now you begin to track and you realize that, you know, you have these profound phenomena. You look at insecurity. You look at people who live lives of unworthiness, yeah. performance-based lives. Mm -hmm. Anybody who lives a performance-based life or lives a life under, the, under this ruler of perfectionism is guaranteed to end up in a state of rejection because you'll never be perfect. Yeah. Wow. Right? Yep. And that's the demand of religion. You see, the demand of religion is we have to be perfect. To the letter the, of the law. To right. the letter of the law. Wow. And the consequence of not being perfect is that you now move into judgment. And so judgment is a profound thing, mm -hmm. but people can rarely become healed in, a, in an environment of judgment, you see. So the healing of the heart finds it very difficult in an environment where, where you have religion and where you have the mixture of that and where people feel judged mm. and they feel like terrible people for things, you see, because the Father is rich in mercy and He transforms our life mm. in His mercy and His goodness, you see. So then you have insecurity, you have, you have um, then you can have the spins of inferiority and envy and jealousy in people's lives. You, you can have unworthiness that begins to happen, the feeling that I have to perform in order to be validated, in order to be accepted. Mm -hmm. And then all of a sudden people just start to live in shadows and we begin to cover ourselves. We brand ourselves in certain yeah. ways. And it all becomes the, the, mm. the fruit of, of a life where they've never experienced the love of God. Now you say all of these things, yeah. or most of them, most. can be traced back to what you called a fractured heart. The fractured heart. The fractured heart, the mm -hmm. heart that has never been mended by the love of God, mm -hmm. if it's been hurt. Mm -hmm. yeah. It's never been mended by That's the right. love of God. Yeah. So, Len, I want you to talk to me about, because uh, we talked yesterday and you shared some testimonies yeah. Oh, yeah. With, with me. F 
phenomenal oh, testimonies incredible of how God took a fractured heart mm -hmm. in, say, a young man whose parents were divorced yep. and he suffered that yep. fractured heart mm -hmm. as a young boy and didn't even really realize it. That's right. Tell me what happened. Well, that's a, these are all isolated stories that are all so profound, but these are awakenings for me as well. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, like it's like I'm thinking like, Len, where have I been all of these lives? I know. When, when we talked about that, I thought the same thing. Where have we been? Yeah. <laughs> like, like we all know that there is a consequence that happens in the lives of, of a children and, and there can be a multiplicity of reasons. So I share this not to bring any judgment as it relates to the husband and the wife or the parents yeah. because yeah. crisis happens. But, but the fruit of the, of the destruction of crisis is w w the children are not exempt from the fallout of right. it. Children drive identity in part through the relationship of their parents mm -hmm. and through the relationship of the power of what this family unit is. And when there's a fracturing, that fracture then goes into the identity of that child. And they live in the shame, they live in the brokenness in, the, in, in their lives, sometimes with a mixture of all kinds of feelings. Now, Would that I cause them then to act out? You got to, it. You know. You've mm. got it. Wow. You know, Every time there's a fracture in the heart, there becomes a behavioral response yeah. that begins to reflect that as a coping mechanism or as something. You know, I'm thinking as mm. you're saying mm. all this that a lot of counseling, psychology going on in a lot of places and they w treat all these symptoms. Through the intellect. Right. Doesn't work. And they're not and getting they to the it. core of the issue, particularly oh. if that person's not connecting to the love of God, right? We, the love of the Father. We are, we are going to see the day where you know, we become ministers of mm. the glory of God. Like I'm jumping ahead and I'll, I'll, I'll come back. That's but, okay. But, but you want to, you know, the, one of the highest things that the Father desires yeah. is that we would experience His love in our lives. Yeah. And as we experience His love, His desire is that He could love people through us. Yeah. 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 Like think about that. It's not just that we, we say to people, I love you. And, 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 I, and I say it's genuine. We do love people. Yeah. That's the nature of, of, of children of God. That's the nature of people everywhere. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We love people. But there's another dimension in which the Father loves people through us. And that becomes huge. Yeah. And you see, when that happens, that becomes part of the, of the engrafting of the Father himself that then awakens that person. You see, we, you've, we've been around Christian circles long enough to know that the teachings about the orphan heart and yeah. those kinds of things. Oh, yeah. But the heart of Jesus was to bring us into sonship. Yeah. You see, the whole earth travails right. for the yeah. revealing of the sons of God. That's right. You know, Which even, is a family relationship. Absolutely. Yeah. You even think of the fivefold ministry. We're going to see a wineskin shift from the fivefold ministry being an authoritative governmental type of model with an equipping function attached to it. Mm -hmm. But the undercarriage of the fivefold ministry is really the heart of the Father himself. Yeah. And when you see the heart of the Father that nurtures that fivefold ministry, then that equipping, that nurturing, it all becomes part of the family that God desires to create, you see? And so it becomes a relational model, wow. not a governmental and authoritative mm -hmm. model, very right. different. Yeah. And so back to your question you raised, Joan, is, is so I, I began to pray with this young man in his 20s. And you could see that there was a deep brokenness in his life. Mm -hmm. And as I saw this brokenness, I began to sense this. And, and then this epiphany began to hit me that the umbrella of the order of the family that had defined his identity it was like the father was saying, Len, I desire to impart my love into his heart. And as it began to go into this young man, something was transforming in his heart where he was being brought by the love of the father into a higher order, yeah. into the heart of the father that transcends the order of natural family. And yeah. he was being awakened in the heart of the Father and His family. And suddenly you watched, and when we finished praying, He said, in my heart I forgive my mother. Wow. And He began to weep wow. and cry. And, and that night at the meeting I said to Him, tell us, and I really went on a limb on this thing, I said to Him, tell us what happened today. Yeah. He said, I finally have peace in my life. I finally have forgiveness. He said, I finally feel 
like I am secure and whole in who I am for the first time wow. in my entire life. Yeah. Wow. You see, this is what happens as the love of the Father comes into the hearts and it is so life-changing. There was, there was I, I prayed for another, and I could go on and on in these stories, but this girl came out of a home that was, that was very hurt and broken, and, and the abandonment of her father mm. was horrific in her life. And in the cry of her heart to be loved, okay, the cry of her heart, she became really vulnerable, mm. okay? And so... As, as is in the case of many people in this profound vulnerability, as a girl looking for the love of the Father, it, her life just spun yeah. right. into a whole bunch of relationships yeah. that were so unhealthy. Wow. And so she came and she said to me, then will you pray? Because all of these people are springing up in my life. As she since had made a decision, got water baptized, but it's like the enemy was hunting her down. You see, brokenness is interesting because where you see people who have been abused and with generational curses over their lives and you sometimes see other things like this you'll see a spiritual marker on those people wow. and when you pray you've got to break that spiritual marker so it's kind of like an open door it's an open door and there is a marker in the spirit realm over that person you sure. can take a woman who is who's no whose life has been whole and they can walk down the street and nobody will bother them mm -hmm. you take someone who's been abused sexually yeah. abused yeah. or or had things happen in their life and now they have been marked by the enemy and they can be fully clothed, discreet. They could be wearing sunglasses and not wanting anybody to see them. But every perverse spirit in a man will watch them and observe them. Yeah. Wow. Because there's a marker on their lives. Yeah. And when you pray, you see, you've got to break the power of that marker off them. Yeah. Mm. And, and then you see it's part of the restoring. So for this woman, it was to pray that the love of the father that was a vacuum in her life mm. would fill her. Yeah. It was another staggering you know, story. You know what's amazing here is that everything that you're saying about mm. comes back to the family core. Totally. And whatever goes wrong in that, which Huge. was created by God it was created and is a reflection God. of a family relationship in it heaven. It is. And that's the way we were created. It is. And every issue that we're facing in a massive way in our society yes. comes back to that. It is. And how that happens yes. in the family. And there's an earthly family that is meant to be a mere reflection. Sure. Ultimately, this was the desire of the Father. Yeah. It all, the crash of Adam and Eve destroyed it all. But it's the desire of the Father, because now you see we're birthed into the family yeah. of God. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know? Yeah. And into the heart of this profound love that births this authentic identity. I, I think I couldn't agree with you more about what God <laughs> is about to do. We all prophesy this oh, yeah. great move of God, right? Well, yeah. absolutely, because God moves oh, in yeah. great ways. Uh, but over and over, we're hearing about this, this coming about the oneness of this and the absolutely. family relationship yeah. of this. And, and, but I'm looking at our culture, and there's probably been more fractured oh, people, broken families than ever before in our ever. history, which tells me that the earth is being set up for the greatest move of God yeah. we've ever seen. We are, we are tasting, you know, we've talked about for years, right, yeah. this, the, the people who prophesied, Wigglesworth and yeah. John Lake, yeah. and right. others, yeah. that there was going to come a move of God that was going to eclipse. Wouldn't it be amazing if just like there was an awakening of the Holy Spirit, mm. that this, this move of God now, mm -hmm. that now builds where, where, you see, Jesus came to reveal the Father. Yeah. That, Jesus came to be Savior of the world. Yeah. Jesus came to bring the kingdom of God. And then he came to reveal the Father. Yeah. Right? Yeah. And, and so now we begin to see that, that we are entering into an era where in the crisis of the cry of the world, yeah. that, you know, this is an awakening of the Father. Yeah. Even gangs, you know, one of the yeah. reasons that gangs happen, and we yeah. know it, is that they, they come from broken homes where there's no, there's no Father. Yeah. But you want to know something? These same men, if they could experience the love of the Father, you see, that's what the cry, the, the cry is, the love of the Father. Wow. Wow. Isn't that something? Like, yeah. Isn't that an amazing thought? Oh, yeah. it is. You know what? You know, Joan, Joan had an experience when her mother, after her mother had passed away, yeah. where she was caught up into heaven. This is months yeah. later, but, mm -hmm. and she described the atmosphere. There's air in heaven. Yes. Well, but it's not air. It's the love of God. <laughs> it's pure love. There you are. You breathe it in. Yeah. 
And when you breathe it out, there's it some is. deposit <laughs> left in you. Isn't it Len, I just, we just have a couple minutes, but I, yeah. I want you to tie into this just the difference between the anointing and the glory. Sure. Because I'm saying, I'm looking at you and I'm, I'm going, I see something in Len mm. that is flowing out of him. Mm. And as ministers, and I know that yeah. it, you don't have to be, you know, um, have degrees behind your name. Everybody's no, a minister. We are. But but tell us about the anointing and the glory because you know what? We have to have the love of God slash glory of God in us in order to minister in this way. I can see it in your eyes and I can see it in your demeanor just talking about oh. these people that there's something imparted oh, there is. into these people. It's not just head knowledge. No, no. The First of all, we're transformed from glory to glory. We're not, yeah. The Bible doesn't say we're transformed from power to power. No. Right. We're transformed from glory to glory. You can be healed in your body, but not be transformed in your heart. Yeah, right. You see? And so the, uh, the power of God, the anointing of God, is the dunamis of the Holy Spirit. Hmm. But, but the Bible says in 1 John 4 that the Father is love. You know, even that prayer in Ephesians, in Ephesians 1 and Ephesians 3, that starting in verse 16 in right. both of those chapters, yeah. Yeah. study it. And for the viewers to study it, it's a revelation of the Father. Yeah. Right. Right. And so in that, what happens is, is you, you take a glimpse and say, well, what is the essence of the glory of God? And you see it in Exodus 34 with Moses. Mm -hmm. When he asks to see the, the, says, can I see your glory? Mm -hmm. and, the, and the father says, yes, takes him behind a rock and he passes by. Now you would have thought like, like Elijah, that it was going to be thunder or it was going to be mm -hmm. lightning or an earthquake or whatever it is. He passes by and now it's described. The father, glorious, or sorry, long suffering, merciful, forgiving. Mm. What we see is the depiction of the character of God. Wow. The glory of God is the essence of his character. Mm -hmm. What transforms us is when our heart begins to connect with his character. And the, the overriding character of this, of the Father, described in one word that opens up the plethora of the majesty of all he is, is his love. Wow. We're going to come back. We only have a few minutes to finish yeah. this up, so we're going to put a wrap on it, right? Yeah. <laughs> we're going to share these with things with you. We'll be right back. Canada needs a fresh move of God, and you can help by partnering financially with Lifeline Today with Dick and Joan and the breakthrough anointing that's on this ministry. All monthly donors join our unique group of faithful partners, and in appreciation, Dick and Joan will send you a special DVD. In it, Dick and Joan share their hearts and vision for Canada and take time to pray powerfully over you. In addition, we will send you this year's special partner fridge magnet, a reminder that you stand together with Dick and Joan for Canada. Partner at $50 a month and also receive this leather-bound journal entitled Sacred Time, Sacred Place. This journal will bring greater intimacy to your daily time with the Lord. Faith-filled partners giving $100 a month will also receive this elegant journal Bible personally signed with a note of encouragement from Joan. Your tax-deductible donation will empower this ministry to release the prophetic voice of God across our nation. Call today and say yes to becoming a partner with Dick and Joan. Phone 403-942-0123 or email info at dickandjoan.com today. In Job 16, verses 20 to 21, it says, My intercessor is my friend as my eyes pour out tears to God. On behalf of a man, he pleads with God as a man pleads for a friend. Here in the Lifeline Today Prayer Center, we want to be your friends. Some of you already are. We've never met face to face, but we've walked with you through your difficult season. And we consider it such a great privilege to be able to do that. If you've never called us before, this is your personal invitation. Give us a call, share your need with us. We will pray, we will intercede. The number's on your screen, 403-942-0123. Call us right now. We're with Lenz Oderman, and you can see we <laughs> we could fill much more time here on this <laughs> subject. But I also sense many people at home. Oh my goodness! Well, the moment this program start started, I could sense people at home feeling mm. weepy, feeling uh, uh, just a, a deep touch in their heart. Yeah. Yeah. 
over this situation. Because, uh, I mean, they can look totally normal on the outside, as you said, but inside, there's a cry. So uh, why don't you just look at camera two and, and uh, speak to those who are just experiencing sure. this right and pray for them, would you? Yeah. You know, a lot of times religion makes you feel like you're a failure and it can make you feel like you have regrets or that, you know, you've fallen short. But the Father, He loves you and He understands. And He's merciful and He's kind. And you're His daughter and you're His son. Right. And He says, come to me. Just come to me and let me love you. And if you will let me love you, I will transform your heart. And as you open your heart and allow him to go through the places of pain, let him go into those places of, of woundedness. Let him go into those places where you feel so lost and abandoned. And he will bring you in and he will love you and he will nurture you. I pray, Father, that, you're, that the glory of your love goes into the heart of this very person where you've been abused and where relationships just came apart in your life and where I pray where you felt hopeless and, and where you felt like, where do I turn? Does anybody understand? Thank you. Father, I thank you that you understand. You know this one personally. You hold them in the palm of your hand. And I pray, Father, for a fresh, fresh mm. experience yes. in your love to come into this daughter, to come into this son and transform them into the place of becoming a beloved daughter, a beloved son. Yes. <laughs> Father, where everything that's important to them is truly important to you. Father, I thank you for this. Father, I thank you that you take their life and in this brokenness and in this thing, in this dimension of pain, that you will so transform them that, Father, through that you will love people through them. Father, I pray that they will become people that are lovers of God and that you will love people through their lives. Bless them, Father, I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. I'm going to invite you to call the prayer center. I sense there's many. I, I just have a, wo a woman's name, Sarah, that's on my heart. That you're, that you're really broken right now. Something's happened and there's something that's really, mm. I want you to call the prayer center because someone's going to connect with you and pray. Boy, I feel this very strong, oh, it's very strong. for a person named Sarah. Uh, we just want to release ministry to you and you can call us or you can email, you can text into the prayer center. Uh, it's so critical you do this because God is doing something. You, you know, we've got us, it's like, plugging the hole in a boat. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, if you don't plug it, it just keeps sinking Absolutely. every time yeah. you bail the water. Right. But it'll, So it's plugging the hole in the boat. Yeah. Thank you, Len. Thank, Thank you, Len. Appreciate Thank you. this. Thank you we're so gonna, much. Thank you. We're going to do uh, another program coming up with Len, so we'll be touching on this kind of thing again soon, so stay tuned. Uh, stay tuned to Lifeline today. Mm -hmm. Thank you for being a part of this. Thank you for partnering with us. Yes. We really appreciate it. God bless you. We'll see you again next bless time. Bless you. This program is supported by viewers like you, and we thank you for partnering with us. We want to hear from you. Send us your prayer requests, praise reports, and comments about the program. To watch past episodes, learn about the ministry, or contact us, visit our website at dickandjoan.com. You can also find us on Facebook and follow us on Twitter. To find out how you can have Dick and Joan at your church, event, or conference, call Lifeline today at 587-425-5730 or email info at dickandjoan.com.